a few days ago rise of kingdoms officially teased a second brand new legendary archer commander coming to the game and so today i am finally going to go over what this commander does how i feel about the direction that these new archer commanders are headed and is it possible that this commander will be a must have for infantry players in rise of kingdoms but first what's going on guys cheers now i'm sure you've seen the skills for this new archer commander i posted them on my community page here on youtube and if you missed that when the information dropped that means you're probably not subscribed so consider doing that and liking the video while you're down there but for those of you that haven't seen the new skills or like to wait for my videos to go over these new commanders that's what we're gonna do first real quick and i just gotta say my friend got married this weekend the wedding was beautiful but this information dropped on the same day and so i just wasn't able to cover this as soon as the news came out i just got home this morning literally like an hour ago not even actually and so i'm recording this video for you today anyway as you can see this is an archer versatility and skill tree commander which means this is going to be on the wheel of fortune if history is to repeat itself but the question is why is it a skill-based commander well i know why it's a skill-based commander but it seems like the most interesting part about this commander is the true damage this is yet again the second of these two commanders that has healing mighty healing and true damage now we have covered mighty healing extensively over the past week if you guys don't know the difference between healing and mighty healing i highly recommend you check out my previous two videos we uncovered with the help of speco pretty much the exact formula for mighty healing the only thing we don't know is if there is a cap to the multiplier which we will have to test when these new commanders come into the game but now that we know what mighty healing is it it really helps us understand how good these new commanders could be so this first skill is an active skill with a 1000 rage requirement and if this is a primary commander you're going to deal direct damage to a target troop now i suspect that that is going to be single target skill damage okay the second part of the skill though says that if you are the secondary commander you mighty heal a large portion of your troops slightly wounded units and deal a percentage of this skills heal strength as true damage to a target troop and temporarily reduce its march speed okay so here we see something very interesting we see a second archer with mighty healing and true damage and this is so bizarre to me like just the direction that archers are headed is so weird i never would have expected these types of skills on archer commanders from a from a lore perspective from a logical perspective it just doesn't make any sense sense to me we'll talk about that i guess in a little bit the second skill very cut and dry health and march speed those are like my two favorite things to see on any commander so i'm actually really happy about that hopefully it's not like if it's 10 percent health and 10 percent march speed like throw it right in the garbage anyway skill three this commander's troop takes less normal damage that is basically talking to you liu che okay that's talking to you william wallace this is literally just take less damage from liu che that's basically what this is because this is an archer commander so this is basically meant to counter that however taking less normal damage is nice because i mean you will just be taking less white numbers in general which is great now again is this five percent is this 30 percent who knows how good this commander is who knows whenever this commander's troop uses an active skill it mighty heals up to three nearby allied or friendly troops including this commander's troop for a large portion of their slightly wounded units this skill has a cooldown okay so they don't tell us what the cooldown is so we have no idea how good this skill actually will be but basically anytime you mighty heal with this as the secondary you're gonna mighty heal again and nearby allies will get a mighty heal as well the fourth skill says you take less damage okay so this is literally the fourth skill in a row that focuses on being tanky okay the first skill you heal which is tanky second skill gives you health which is tanky third skill takes less normal damage and heals which is tanky fourth skill takes less all damage apparently which is tanky so we are building the tankiest of tanky archer commanders here which is like the complete opposite of the direction that archers have been going lately very odd stuff here while this commander troop is on the map so this will not work in a garrison whenever it is reduced to a certain number of units remaining it is mighty healed for a large portion of its slightly wounded units for a period of time their troop will lose attack but you take less damage again even more tanky this skill can trigger once per hour the expertise says whenever you heal a troop the healed troop temporarily gains defense and deals more normal damage so once again you gain defense when healed you are so tanky with this commander now how tanky you will be comes down to the numbers we don't have any numbers we don't have an identity for this commander we don't know anything here except for the fact that every skill seems to be focused on being 
very very tanky and if you guys again missed my previous videos mighty healing in the open field is about 1.38 times stronger than regular healing but when you get higher numbers of troops let's say 400,000 or more and even in rally scenarios where you have 2 million troops or more you're going to be healing like three four five times more than regular healing so this is an extremely high healing factor regardless almost of what the number is going to be so what do i think about this new commander and why might it be a must have for infantry mains well i first first of all as an archer this feels very bizarre this does not seem like the direction that i thought archers would go down every single skill on this kit if you were to tell me you know just the skills without telling me the troop type i would assume that this was going to be an infantry commander why is that well infantry seem to be the tankiest of the troop types and so what business does an archer have having four really five literally every kit everything on their kit is tanky except for their like their talents i guess there's no tankiness here but everything else is but we don't really care about the talents because i suspect that this will only be used as a secondary commander ever right now of course the first thing that comes to mind is pairing this with Yuge Leong or pairing it with obviously Herman Prime has the support tree that's a little bit tanky as well Yuge Leong has more damage Herman Prime has more supportive nature and has March speed so there's a lot to love about that as well but the other thing we have to consider is that the other commander that was revealed the mightiest governor commander based on the way that their skills were worded a majority of their kit is going to work in the open field as well and that is a mighty healing AoE commander right and so you could do that as the primary this as the secondary and now you've got a bunch of mighty healing a bunch of true damage you've got some march speed here you've got some tankiness i don't know like this seems i mean we'll have to wait and see to know what the best pairings are but just the direction here feels very weird as a matter of fact somebody commented on my previous video talking about the other new archer commander which let me just pause here lilith if you're ever going to leak commanders again give us a name it is so absurd that i have to say the new commander and then the other new commander the new archer the second new archer like oh my god if you want people to make videos about this to get the hype going give us a name so that way people at least know what we're talking about okay anyway the other day somebody commented on one of my videos saying that these new archers feel sort of like an opposite to the disciplined priests in world of warcraft in other words a disciplined priest will deal high amounts of burst damage and then you will heal your allies based on how much damage you deal this seems to be the opposite okay you heal a ton of troops and if you heal a lot that's how much damage you will deal as a result okay this just the fact that it's backwards to that feels really weird okay and now I never played a dis disciplined priest so if I got that wrong then you can flame me in the comment section below but when you think about archers in any sort of like fictional or non-fictional setting high fantasy whatever I never think about a healer right I never think about that as an archer trait I never really think about being like tanky and and that sort of thing as an archer right archers to me seem like they would be glass cannons right high amounts of damage but like archers be they don't wear like chain mail right they don't wear like plate armor they wear like leather or or cloth right and so they wouldn't be able to take that much damage that seems to me like the most logical direction that archers would go in and if we look at all the archers that are in rise of kingdoms right now we have basically everyone that's ever mattered has been massive amounts of AOE skill damage right that has been the trend the only exception being Boudicca Prime but you saw how quick we put her on the bench I mean she was around maybe for a year and a half maybe two years which is still good for a commander but like she was immediately like I don't know people run Osher Bonapal over uh Boudicca Prime these days sometimes even Nebu just for the March speed and for the AOE right and it just seems like every new archer that has been impactful has had aoe skill damage and so from one perspective i could see where the developers are coming from where it's like okay if we just keep doing aoe skill damage then archers are just going to be so power crept and broken that it's like you, it doesn't make any sense like you know they're always going to be dominant but this seems like the literal opposite of what archers want and care about and also the implication here is that they're going to have to start investing in a new formation right they're either, either gonna have to do the circle or testudo formation depending probably the circle formation based on how this is worded but one thing is certain and that is that it seems like the developers are straying away from skill damage I know that this is a skill tree commander but you're most likely going to be using this for the healing and true damage 
and if we look at William Wallace and Liu Che uh all the greatest new infantry commanders have been smite damage right and so maybe the game in just in general is moving away from skill damage because that just seems to be the trend now despite this commander being super weird and wonky right it's all tankiness which is very bizarre for archers do I think it's going to be good right do I think this is going to be a good commander well first of all um all year all of 2024 we've gotten a plethora of very niche commanders that nobody really needed unless you wanted to do that niche role in the example of Belisarius Prime obviously that is for swarming down structures if we look at William Wallace for example his niche was sort of being the first with the smite tree for open field but if you had Alexander the Great expertise already he didn't really need William Wallace right and so in 2024 where all these new commanders seem to be a little bit lackluster a little bit boring a little bit on the sidelines right it makes me feel like this commander is also going to be kind of mid right because we look at this kit and it's just not what we expect and it doesn't seem to have that much synergy with all the other archers that we already have in the game and so it's like why would we bother right it seems like it's going to be another niche thing where it's focused on tankiness and healing which could have a role but again if it doesn't already fit with everyone already has built for their archers a lot of people are probably going to skip it unless they're massive archer mains or if the numbers come out to where it's like okay this is actually broken you basically need it well then you basically need it but again this to me seems more of a niche commander now the reason that I said earlier in the video that this could be a must have for infantry players is because infantry players might only be running, let's say two infantry, two cav, one archer. That's what I'm running or three infantry, one cav, one archer, if they're insane, but you could do that. And by having this archer commander in your five, six, seven army lineup, what you're going to be ensuring is that your infantry units will constantly be gaining defense. They will constantly be gaining more normal damage and you're constantly going to be healing them in the open field. Okay. And this commander being tanky themselves is going to be healing themselves and also has health and March speed. And they have this massive once per hour heal here on the fourth skill. That's going to keep this commander alive. Okay. A lot of the problems with archers come from them being very glass cannon and them being basically the number one target in the open field. I suspect that this commander is going to trade really well. I actually want to talk about this in just a second, but I think this commander is going to trade really, really well, especially in duels. And so what I'm saying is that this commander being able to stick around in the field for much longer than other archers is going to essentially give your infantry units more normal damage, more defense, and constantly healing them in AOE fashion is going to ensure that your William Wallace Liu Che or your Liu Che Alex is going to be popping off, right? This is more smite damage. That's what this is more smite damage, more tankiness, and just refilling their troops so you don't have to go back to the city. This seems like the best support for infantry players in the game depending on how big these numbers are okay so that's why i think it's super important this commander could be a must-have for infantry players but as far as synergy with other archers it doesn't really make that much sense now let me just say really quick about the performance of this commander what i want you guys to understand okay in a 1v1 duel whether it's with the rock battle simulator or in an arc of osiris when this commander first drops i'm telling you now I suspect that this commander will perform extremely well in duels, but please don't make an investment based on that unless you were planning on getting this commander anyway. Okay. I'm telling you right now, Boudicca Prime performs extremely well in duels, but not that many people are still using Boudicca Prime in the open field if they can help it because they have Julia Leong, Herman Prime, they have Ashurbanipal, they have Nebu. Lots of players have benched Boudicca Prime even though she is super good in 1v1 duels she has a great healing factor she has a strong debuff her single target damage is high here we see a lot of single target damage a lot of healing a lot of tankiness i suspect that the early results listen closely i suspect the early results for this commander are going to be phenomenal but please think about what this commander is it's a tanky archer that seems to have synergy with nobody except for the other mightiest governor commander until we see what these actual skills are but i don't want people to see initial test results and be like oh my god this commander's so broken it's beating everyone in duels and then it's just like so is 
Boudica Prime, and I'm not seeing her in the open field that much, right? She's kind of slow. She's single target. It is what it is. Now, the benefit that this has over Boudica Prime is that this is going to be a secondary, so you can still get that active skill pop from Julia Leong, whoever you're going to pair this with. But I just want to issue a quick little warning, okay? If you see unbelievable test results, and I might even post a Rock Battle Simulator video where the results here are insane, and that's going to be completely true. It's going to be honest, but I want you guys to be able to interpret that correctly and understand that like, okay, just because the one V one duels are insane, doesn't mean this commander is a must have. We have to see how it actually works in the game. Now, whether or not I'm going to be investing in this commander, I have no idea because they haven't told us any of the numbers. So I can't say is this good is this not if this mighty heal is as good as Richard then yes this could be insane that could pump out a ton of insane damage but it is only single target so kind of yikes now the last thing I want to talk about here the fourth skill this is basically uh Constantine right everyone kind of came to that conclusion right away but if we take a look at Constantine's kit here in the game we can see uh the fourth skill gives you a massive healing factor 15,000 healing factor if we get this healing factor from this new commander that's going to be absurd with mighty healing because the way that it scales again if you miss my previous videos watch them because that'll you'll be like oh my god there's no way it's 15,000 right that'll be wild but yeah I expect this to kind of fall in that same bucket the other thing I'm going to mention here is that this is probably going to be Canyon meta I mean I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that right now but mighty healing is broken in Canyon I mean regular healing is already good mighty healing is going to be even better and the fact that this has aoe healing and health and it's just tanky all around plus it's supportive it's buffing nearby armies this is probably going to be canyon meta so if you're a player that loves canyon just expect to see this all over the place i can't imagine that it won't be but i'm curious to know what you guys think about this new archer commander is this kind of the direction that you thought they would go with archers are you excited for like basically something new right i mean mighty healing and true damage is new we've never seen this before so it is exciting to get some something new however it just doesn't seem like the appropriate troop type and it doesn't seem like it has synergy with what is already in the game so it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit weird it's a double-edged sword right so I'm curious to know what you guys think about this I guess at the end of the day I kind of am excited that they're just releasing something new if again if this is going to be another goth girl like art amnesia if this is going to be a commander that we can pair with art amnesia and makes her meta again then I am more than uh, here hear me out if this commander is meta broken OP with art amnesia in the field I will probably build a second archer set of equipment just for that okay so mark my words we'll see i'm not going to base it off initial test results though so wait until actual battle reports come out but anyway let me know what you guys think about this new commander in the comments section below do you think this is the right direction for archers or are you just not really that excited i'm curious to know what you guys think and while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so the rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much watching this has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.